Hey friends, it's Carla from Creative Love Affair and I'm here today with Emerald Creek Craft Supplies and I'm showing you a really cool way to make some DIY enamel embellishments with stamps and the vintage beeswax embossing powder. So we've got a lily stamp here from Emerald Creek and I'm stamping it on some Lawn Fawn watercolor paper with Memento ink. And I'm using that ink because I'm going to use some alcohol-based markers. We also have Monty the Raccoon and Sylphie the Fairy. And I'll link all these stamps and sh uh, to let you know where you can get them in the Emerald Creek store. Now I am going ahead and coloring the lily in with a hobby color marker, but it is alcohol-based, so you could use Copics, or I also have some Prismacolor here. I really just do basic coloring. Um, I don't normally do a whole look at my coloring because I um, feel like I just kind of do the basics. There are people out there who do amazing coloring, but I want to show you how easy it is to really get a cool effect. And uh, so this is the way that I do it. I lay down a lighter color and I'm having it darker kind of in the center and a little bit on the edges. And then I'm going over partially with a darker color. And then I decided that darker color was a little darker than I wanted. So I grabbed a different yellow that was still a bit darker than the first yellow. And I just kind of blend in uh, where you'd see some shadows and I give it some depth just so that your eye really notices that there is a difference in between the layers. And then I go back over it with the lighter. I've got uh, a little bit of a third yellow here that's a little darker and I'm just highlighting those uh, edge areas and now I've got the very lightest yellow and I'm just blending those together. The neat thing about alcohol markers are that they do blend so they stay wet for a while and when you go over a lighter color uh, with a lighter color over your dark layers then it just blends out into a soft blend. And I like that the watercolor paper has given it a base of uh, a yellow kind of in the center. So that's why I didn't have to color the very center. Now I'm going to take some greens and just do the leaves. And uh, basically I just layer the lightest color over first and then I'm gonna do a few areas with the darker color. So this is kind of how easy. Now I did that little area that should be a flower, but that's okay, I go over it again with a yellow and you really don't even notice it in the end. I really love this Lily stamp. Uh, the stamps that I have here today are a red rubber and they're on a cling backing and that cling backing can go onto an acrylic block or I had a stamp uh, press that can stamp several times. Monty the little raccoon and Sylphie the fairy, I've stamped them onto uh, the Express Copic coloring paper which is a bit of a smoother paper and has a really nice blend you can also use a white cardstock and I think people just have their favorites. This is, um, I haven't used the Express cardstock too much, but it does seem to really blend nicely. So it was a nice choice for these two. And uh, I'm going to use these in a couple different projects but I thought it would be so neat to show you how to kind of easily and quickly color these in and then be able to make them into an enamel um, piece of ephemera that you can use on cards and scrapbooks and canvases 
and uh, it just really gives you a nice enamel embellished look. So here's this little Monty the raccoon. He is really cute and I don't show completely coloring him but I just end up coloring him with some browns and doing some highlights to uh, give him some depth and I actually looked at um, a an image in Google just to look at a raccoon and see what colors and it I could have used a gray but I decided to go with a brown now Sylphie I'm doing her little dress in blue she's so tiny and cute and uh, this would be really sweet for you know even children's little girls birthday cards she would look adorable on these stamps stamp really really nicely and I believe a lot of them you can actually order them on a wood block if you prefer that but I do like having the cling backing I also have an unboxing video of all the beautiful supplies that uh, Emerald Creek had sent me. I'm on their design team now so I have some lovely items to work with and I'll link that video below so you can have a look. And uh, here the really pretty flower is colored in with a purple and you can see how I just add some nice shading. Now the stamps are nice because it has some areas that show you where you could shade and uh, you can just go over those with your markers or if you're coloring with colored pencils and here's a look close up at how pretty that stamp is now here's a look at everything cut out i just took some time and really cut them out close to the edges it really didn't take that long and i used a craft knife for any areas that were inside and here I'm going to show you how we're going to use this baked texture vintage beeswax embossing powder to create the enamel embellished look. So I'm taking a Versamark pad and I'm pressing it directly onto my stamped image and I'm covering it with that vintage beeswax. This is really cool new product that was released uh, at, CA, at uh, Creativation this year and it really gives such a really amazing effect like a layered beeswax um, that you would put on with a lot more effort. Now this is created by Seth Apter of The Altered Page and uh, Kim who's with Emerald Creek, who owns Emerald Creek. So this was a collaboration between the two of them and it really is amazing. Now I wanted to show you how one layer looks. Very pretty. And I wanted to go over it again. Now I'm changing papers when I put my Versamark on because of course if you poured your embossing powder on the same paper that you poured your uh, or that you had stamped your pad onto, it's going to stick to your background. It's going to stick to everything that has that Versamark pad on it. I'm heating from the back because anything that's a little bit chunkier, if you heat it from the back first, it's going to prevent those uh, beautiful chunks from just flying away. So as soon as it just starts to warm up and melt, then I can heat it from the front. So then this is a look at two layers. So very pretty, and I've decided to just do one more layer. And I can tell you it does not use much so even after doing all these pieces, uh, this, the package of embossing powder is still full. So this is how gorgeous those look with three layers on them. Uh, be sure to check out the links below to see where you can pick up these gorgeous supplies. And I'd love for you to like and subscribe. And I have a canvas that's going to be coming up next. I will link it and I'd love for you to check it out. Thanks for stopping by.